Welcome back everybody, Hi Tech Lab here. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing four of these Renogi uh, 100 watt solar panels on this box trailer here behind me. This is a 20 foot box trailer and we use this when we go to the sand dunes and stuff like that. Uh, we've got some lights inside and an inverter. These panels, you can see the label here. There are 100 watt panels, and you can pause the video if you really want to get in and read these up close. With these four panels, uh, I have a charge controller, and this came in a kit with these, but this is the Renogi Wanderer uh, solar charge controller. Now this is a PWM controller, and uh, it doesn't have any settings for lithium or anything like that. Uh, but if you were doing that kind of chemistry, you would definitely want a charge controller that's suitable. But today we're going to be using some regular flooded lead acid batteries. So here in this other rig, we have some other flooded lead acid batteries. And essentially, I want to put in this rig uh, four Winston Thunder Sky 700 amp hour cells. But for now, we're going to harvest these. Um, these are like a group 24 or something and they're brand new we put them in in march of 2020 so essentially uh we're going to take them out and put them in that box trailer for now so down here in the rig we have a cabinet and there is a big old 8d battery in there that thing is toast here is our inverter we have that's a 2000 watt harbor freight type inverter so quick trip to ace hardware we got some putty tape and this will go between the solar panel brackets and the roof we got this contraption here this is a three hole, two gang uh, bell box. And essentially this is gonna mount down on the roof. And then there's a conduit fitting and an LB. And then from here I can run a piece of conduit out. So that's that for you. And we're all done at O'Reilly's. Just some little jumper cables for between the batteries to connect them up, nothing too crazy here. So let's go back home. So we're back on the ranch now and I'm getting all these solar panels readjusted. Now these brackets have adjustability up and down and in and out. I've been adjusting them all the way down and in. That way when I lay out these solar panels, they're all identical. And then I'm using a 10 millimeter socket and end wrench to tighten these nice and tight. That way when we go up on the roof, we're not trying to mess with this at all. I'm gonna repeat that for the other brackets. As you can see, they're loose right now. But again, all the way in and all the way towards the bottom of the panel, which to you is this way right now because the panel is upside down. So right now I have these panels on the inside of this trailer kind of up against the front cabinets that we have in here just to illustrate that the width of the panels is uh, not going to be an issue in terms of the width of the trailer. So I'm actually going to grab this panel here and show you guys uh, with these brackets on here, if I hold this up to these supports on the ceiling, you can see that the brackets will hit that support structure. So essentially what I'm going to do is here off camera, I'm going to hold this up and have my cameraman mark holes uh, and drill up through the roof in the other direction, uh, two of the holes. That way I know, you know, I kind of get myself located. And then from there I'm going to put a bolt through and uh, put some sealant and bolt these down and I'll show you guys that process now. So now we've got our holes drilled up through from the bottom, they're quarter inch, and now we're reaming them out to 5 16 And we have the other one on the opposite corner here, and we're gonna ream that one out too. Okay, so this right here was that hole that we just reamed out. So now I can slide the solar panel over, and it looks like it lines up pretty well. It's definitely squeezy, because there's a 5 16 hole, and the bolt we're using is a 5 16 diameter. But it appears, with a little bit of persuasion, like so we can get it in. And now that this is kind of in place and indexed, I can now take a small uh, pilot drill, drill this next hole, and then I have a few more steps. I'm gonna go 3 16 
quarter inch and then five sixteenths with the rest of these holes. Now these brackets right here, these aluminum brackets come with quarter inch holes and we're drilling them out to five sixteenths so we can use the heavier duty hardware so that way there's no concern of wind causing any lift on these panels. So I've got all eight of my holes drilled for these solar panels. You can see a couple of them here. And now I need to get it ready, uh, like the roof ready and the brackets ready to seal all this stuff. So I have this here putty tape. This is three quarter inch by 30 feet. And I also have a silicone gun and I have some of this Dicor self-leveling lap sealant. All these materials will be available on a link down below in the description. I also have some brake clean, uh, which is brake parts cleaner. You can use really any cleaner, uh, but I also have some paper towels. So I'm gonna pull off a paper towel and spray this paper towel with this cleaner. And now I can go ahead and wipe off the roof here. And I'm being pretty gentle because uh, some of this paint is coming off. Uh, this is a aluminum roof with paint on it. However, uh, if this were like a rubber membrane roof, you wouldn't really have this issue. Um, you could probably use isopropyl alcohol for a rubber membrane roof. But in this case, I like brake cleaner because it literally cleans everything, including the paint. Now I'm cleaning both sides of everything just to make sure I get the best seal possible. And uh, I don't want this to leak at all. So, you know, that little bit of extra effort really pays off in the end. So I've cleaned off all four corners of this solar panel or all four brackets, I should say. Now I'm gonna take this putty tape and this stuff is kind of icky, but I'm gonna tear a section and take it and put it on the bottom here. So now I'm gonna repeat this on the other corners. And uh, the only thing that you're gonna wanna do is where the holes are. You're gonna wanna kinda go through the putty so that you can still get your bolts through. So on these brackets, like I showed, I applied the putty on all four of them. They all have it applied and uh, I've drilled out the holes so it should be uh, pretty good to go. Now, those of you that are wondering, this putty essentially what it's doing, I'm gonna have this bolt on here and that's gonna come through like this. And what this putty is doing is it's sealing any water trying to come in from the sides. It's not going to be able to come in and run down the hole of the bolt. Now there is water that's going to be able to come in from where the head of the bolt is, but we'll show you how we take care of that here in a second. But I can now line it up with my holes and set it in place and go ahead and install the bolts. So right now I have a Jarrett helping me down below. He's putting washers and nylock nuts on the bottom. Now well, I'm gonna take the quick second to talk about safety. I'm on a piece of plywood up here because I wanna make sure I don't go crashing through the roof. And when I'm not walking on the plywood, I'm making sure I'm on the supports. So definitely be safe when working on roofs to make sure you don't fall through. Okay, so he's down below ready to go. He's got a wrench on that nut. So I'm gonna... And tighten it down. You can see that sealant is starting to come out. Next one. Ready? Uh, back to the first one. Does it look nice and tight? Perfect. So yeah, you can see up here, it definitely oozed out of there and that's it pressing a seal into place. You ready on the third one? Yeah. Okay, fourth one. You can really see it's making an awesome seal with that. Does it look good? Beautiful, okay. So we've got all four of these bolted down. None of the wires in yet, but unfortunately the sun is setting right now. So first thing in the morning, we're gonna get on this, getting these wired up. And you'll see that here in just a second. Now, the one thing I didn't do is put the lap sealant on these. And the reason is that's the last step you always wanna take because that stuff is a mess. And next thing you know, you're gonna put your hand in it. And that is all bad. I'm gonna take this piece here and show you 
Um, the solar panels are obviously these silver screws kind of poking through. So I'm gonna try and place that junction box about here. And the reason being, if you imagine this is on the other side of the roof, right? And this is coming out the bottom. Uh, I wanna be able to make easy connections with my MC4 cables. And then, uh, like I was saying, this will come down right here. And then I'm gonna bend a piece of EMT conduit and that's gonna S around here. And uh, this connector is gonna be a little bit too low to, to secure to the uh, square tubing here. So I'm gonna be able to bend an offset in that conduit in the into this 90. So it'll come with a 90 and an offset and then go into that LB. And then I can wrap it around here and kind of come down essentially in this corner here. And then uh, I will have to drill a hole in the counter and uh, get the wires in so that I can drop down into my cabinet below. And then we can get those batteries installed. So right here is where I'm gonna go poke up through the roof. So I'm gonna start with my hole saw. Now for reference, this hole saw is inch and a half. And I'm just going through the wood and I'll drill through the metal from the top down. So you can see now in that hole, quite possibly, uh, the metal roof is right there and there's a dimple in the center. And now I'm gonna go from the top and drill down. Here we've got the hole drilled and we went ahead and put the fitting on the back here uh, from the underside and got it all lined up and squared up and then drilled two other holes. These are those holes right there. Now those are quarter inch holes. We're gonna use quarter, uh, quarter 20 carriage bolts and those are gonna come up through after all. Uh, I'm not gonna drill through the box cause I really didn't wanna have the potential for leaks and uh, they actually do fit through these holes and uh, that'll work out pretty well. So we're, that's how we're gonna do that. So uh, I need to clean the roof off um, to make sure all this stuff seals good. So uh, like I talked about earlier, using brake parts cleaner, and I'm really gonna clean this off good, uh, even though the paint is kind of coming off because I really want this to seal really good. So I'm gonna get this cleaned off, get the back of this box cleaned off, and I'll show you what I do with the butyl tape. So I'm doing two layers of the putty tape and uh, I'm kind of going on each side first and then filling in the space between. And then I'm still gonna put lap sealant down on this, uh, but the putty tape is kind of like your first uh, line of defense from getting uh, moisture in here, so. Alrighty, so we've got that putty all on there. I put a little extra around the screws and now we can literally peel this off. I don't know if it shows very well on that side, but the excess here uh, can get peeled off. And uh, then we're still gonna come around with lap sealant and put lap sealant all over this stuff. And there we go, we're all bolted down. I've got my wires in zip tied and strain relieved. And uh, they're here, obviously now the sun is out there connected. These are live, so uh, before I make the terminations on those, I'll definitely wanna cover up these panels. And uh, I didn't really cover the wiring on these panels. Uh, there are some Y's underneath them that it's hard to see now. I don't think you can, but these are wired in parallel. And uh, at a later date, I'm probably gonna rewire them in series and use a different charge controller. But for now with that PWM charge controller, they are wired all in parallel. So in other words, all of the negatives are tied together and all of the positives are tied together with some Y connectors. And if you need those Y connectors, I'll have them on the materials list on my website on the link below in the description. Okay, so I made a piece of conduit here, uh, got a few bends in it. So essentially this is gonna come in here in this corner and we'll come across here from the LB and run over and start kind of coming down over here in the corner. Uh, you probably can't really see it. And then from there, I'm gonna have a coupler. And uh, I kind of changed my plan a little bit, uh, but I have another piece of pipe right here. And uh, this I'm gonna bend an offset because there's a kind of piece of a cabinet in here. And uh, I, I really wanna make sure I clear that. So I'll bend a little offset in there and then meet up with that coupling kind of back here behind the cabinet. So that way everything's nice and concealed. And then I pulled the drawer out. I'll mount that solar controller and whatnot in this cabinet here.
One thing you want to make sure of anytime you're running conduit, you want to get your conduit reamer and ream anywhere you cut the pipe. There are sharp burrs from cutting and uh, you pretty much you want it to be dull enough to where you can run your finger on it uh, without cutting yourself. If it's sharp enough to cut your finger, it can definitely cut through the wire and that can be a fire hazard and also a danger to the next electrician that comes back to work on this. Oh, that sounded lovely. But, lo and behold, we have a battery. And this thing was put in February of 2018. So that's barely even two years. Crazy that that battery, all that lead, all that acid, all that good stuff is totally done for and toast now. So here are the compartments all emptied out. I removed that Harbor Freight inverter. You can see I've got the conduit coming down right there in the back corner and running up here. It's all nice and strapped to the ceiling. So we're good to go in that aspect. I grabbed the two batteries. These are actually group 27 uh, out of that other trailer. And I'm gonna throw these in here and uh, get them connected in parallel. So in other words, negative will be connected to negative and positive will be connected to positive. From there, then I will show you how I connect up the solar charge controller. So we're gonna hook up this solar controller and it's already mounted in here, okay? And on the bottom, there are solar panel plus and minus as well as battery plus and minus. Now, the good news is we have the solar panels uh, on the roof not connected up. We have that junction box, it's not connected. So these wires here that come from the solar panels uh, don't have power to them. So we can get go ahead and get this stuff connected. Um, I have a black cable in here and that goes to this bus bar and that's the battery negative. There's essentially uh, this wire over here that's gonna go over here onto the battery negative terminal, okay? So the battery negative for the solar controller just goes to the bus bar and it'll connect on there. And then the battery positive, uh, you have a fuse link in your hand, Jarrett. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna install a 30 amp fuse because this uh, Renault G Wanderer is rated for 30 amps output. And then we have, this is all number 10 wire. Um, this is gonna go on the battery plus, the red wire is. And then we're gonna use this butt terminal right here and go from that wire onto this fuse link. And then we have a ring terminal here that's gonna go on the other end of the fuse link and onto the positive terminal of the battery. And that will complete our circuit. All we have to do then is connect on the solar panels and connect up the junction box on the roof. Okay, so we have our cable with fuse link all made up and we're gonna save that for here in a minute. The first thing we're gonna do is connect these two wires that come down from the solar panels onto the solar controller. So we'll do uh, negative first. and positive second, and keep in mind these are still disconnected on the roof. Okay, with those two connected up, we can now grab our battery positive cable here and get that screwed into this controller. And uh, we're not gonna connect this onto the battery quite yet, we're just gonna have it inserted and ready to go. So then with that in and connected, we have our negative cable and that's the one that goes to this bus bar right here. So with all of that connected, we can now connect our main wire that comes from this bus bar here onto our battery negative here. We can connect this other wire that goes to our battery shutoff switch for the other loads and stuff to the battery positive on the opposite corner. And we can also connect our solar charge controller, keeping in mind the fuse is still out of here, to that other battery positive terminal that we're landing the wire that goes to the battery shutoff switch to. So now all these wires are in and connected, we can now go ahead and install our 30 amp fuse. So that fuse is all installed and you can see now on our Wanderer, we have a green light for battery and a green light for uh, the battery type. So if you take note, there is a uh, little note here that says there's three different colors the light can be, green, orange, or red. In this case, we have flooded batteries, so we wanna set this to red, 
Uh, the way to do that, you press and hold the button for five seconds, and after holding the button for five seconds, it begins to blink. At that point, you can press the button, and in this case, we're going to press it twice to make it red. And now that it's blinking red, you give it five seconds, and it will time out and activate that as your selection. And now it's in the mode for flooded lead acid batteries, which is what these are here. Now at this point, I need to connect up my solar panels, and in order to do that, I'm going to want to cover them so that way there's no power being generated, so I'm not working with live wires. So I've got these wires all connected up, uh, negative to negative and positive to positive. I can now go ahead and tuck these down here in the box, and then I have this cover for the box that has a gasket. So once those are all tucked in, this will all be sealed. And then from there, we'll be good to go. I'll show you inside generating power. All right, so we're all made up. We can now uncover our panels. And then after a quick ladder run down inside, we can see the PV light on the Wanderer is blinking. And if I grab my clamp meter, you can see right now there's about three amps going into the batteries. Uh, which is fair. Usually these controllers take a second to reach full output, so that's what's probably going on there. But yeah, these batteries are charging up, so awesome stuff. So then the last thing, and I always want to do this last because it's the messiest, is I'm going to put the lap sealant over the heads of these screws. So that goes on kind of like that, all nice and messy. And this will self-level, in other words, it will uh, flatten out on its own. But yeah, that's going to keep any water from entering down uh, through the head of that. And if you really want good measure, you can run it along the edge of that um, bracket. But you can start to see already it's really starting to ooze down and flatten out. So a little goes a long way. You don't want to overdo it. Otherwise, you'll just have a sticky mess. And uh, this stuff is not fun to clean up if you get it on your clothes or your hands. Alrighty, so we are all lap sealant covered or lap sealed up, however you want to say it. You can see it's really starting to level out uh, in here and ooze down, which is exactly what we want because that's how it's going to seal the roof. Now, obviously, this roof vent here, for those of you wondering, yeah, that thing's done for. Our electrical junction box is all sealed up nice and watertight, so nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And uh, lid's on there, and it's gasketed for, uh, you know, waterproofing. And if I jump down below... We can see that the controller is working, PV is on, battery light is blinking, which signifies these batteries are currently being equalized. And if I listen closely, I do hear them slightly boiling. So that is awesome. This is all up and running and this is uh, working quite fantastic. I'm super excited about this. Uh, stay tuned for future videos. I'm going to install a different inverter. As you can see, I took the Harbor Freight one out and uh, I'll probably you know, some time down the road, change out these batteries for something different. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys later. And if you need any supporting document for this video, be sure to check out my website link in the description. Catch you guys later. Bye now.